And a very good evening to you. And this is Newsline Live. And we are broadcasting almost always, as we do, from the Newsfest studios in Dawson Street in Clamwood. And uh, with the COVID-19 figures growing daily and daily, um, there is great concern whether we as a country are doing the right thing. Well, let's find out. This evening, our guest is a rather important person. He's uh, with us after a very long time, and uh, that's probably because he's been busy. Well, the cabinet spokesperson, the joint payment, Dr. Ramesh Patrina, who's also the cabinet minister for plantations. Very good evening to you. Good minister. evening, Faras, and thank you very much for inviting me again for the program. Yes, we've uh, been waiting for a long time for you, but uh, you've been busy. Now, many questions. Um, the numbers are rising and um, there is considerable concern whether we as a country are doing the right thing because of the growing numbers. Um, the complaints are increasing, 40,000, uh, 40, maybe 32,000 people are waiting to come back, they're registered to come back. and. Um, What's the real situation? So, uh, true actually, so two different questions that you asked. Firstly, about uh, uh, COVID situation. Yes, we have seen rapid rise in the numbers of a number of cases. They across 29,000 today actually. So, every day we uh, find out more patients, about 800 to 900 patients on a daily basis. Mm. Yes, uh, it's very much uh, more difficult and it's become a complex situation in relation to the second wave. So whereas the first wave we managed to control effectively with the support of the health staffers and also with the armored forces and police and everybody who got involved. But the second uh, wave, uh, it's become uh, difficult to control not only in Sri Lanka but world over. We have seen rising numbers and more difficult scenarios being uh, faced by different countries. Mm. It's partly because of the fact that this second virus is more contagious, doctors believe. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it spreads so fast. So government had taken whatever the measures possible, but we have uh, understood uh, two factors remain here. One thing is the health effect of that. Yes, we need to control and protect people from this disease. And also, on the other hand, we have to country like ours uh, have to think about, well, for that matter, all the countries think about the economies of theirs. Mm -hmm. So there was a severe battering even during first wave because we had to, you know, we had to keep the country locked down for more than mon one month's time. Yeah. So at that time, so economy was, uh, economy went down really badly. So having taken that also into consideration, we had to take, you know, restricted measures in relation to um, this, you know, lockdown scenario. Yeah. So that's why we didn't go ahead with, you know, complete lockdown. But part by part, section by section, as with the instructions of the health authorities, oh. we have, you know, curtailed movements, probably one reason why that we couldn't effectively control right. the spread of the disease. Right. So, and also we are taking balance of it. Hopefully, with the new vaccine coming into play, we uh, we have also ordered. Uh, we might be able to see the controlling levels possibly after three to six months time, world over, and also in Sri Lanka. And are we do? Um, are we ready to buy some of these vaccines? Because the WHO says twenty percent they give us, but twenty percent of our. Uh, voter base is, or people over 18 eligible to vote is around 15 million so 20 percent is around 3 million um have you got enough money to pay we, we, some doctors say we need to uh, have at least 80 percent of our population uh, given the vaccine yeah that's right but we need to start somewhere and uh, we are very positive about it once we get the vaccine the first quarter the second quarter, whatever the cost it you know entails, we have to purchase the vaccine. Right. If it's effective, so the countries in the world, uh, starting from United Kingdom, they have started using the vaccine. So it's proved to be effective, 90, 95 percent or more effective. So yes, under these circumstances, we have to take the vaccine. And also, there is a different mechanism. Yes, some doctors say that we have to inject at least 80 percent of the population. But if you look at the spreading map, you know clearly, mm. it's more or less concentrated in the you know, Western province. In yeah. Western province also, it's in the municipal council area. So we should be able to, you know, you know find out those pockets and, you know, priority areas right. and uh, inject those areas first. Does the so, cabinet of ministers fully appreciate the fact that 
uh, the COVID-19, the fight against that and containing that is more important uh, priority-wise than anything else. Yes, of course, that's why His Excellency the President summoned that, you know, the meeting every day. He's listening to authorities, he's, you know, drawing out, you know, the plans and he's working full-time on that, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a tedious effort, actually. We must thank him. So, more than any other ministers, uh, the, more than the Cabinet of Ministers, actually, he's personally fully involved. He's very concerned and also we are very concerned about the evolving scenario. Right. Now then, um, this morning, um, uh, Dr. Patrina, I was contacted by a, um, shall we say, a regular viewer of Newsline. And uh, what uh, the person had to say was absolutely um, shocking. Um, it's going to be played on our screen, but I'll, I'll read to you what these messages were. There were a string of messages, uh, and um, here we go. The first one uh, came to me in the early hours of the morning, um, around 7 o'clock actually, uh, around that time. First one said, five, uh, five hours in the airport. Center for Disease Control now says 10 days quarantine, but our guys in Sri Lanka insisting on 14 days. Imagine the cost and mental stress being locked up. Another one. Not a drop of water in the airport, nothing to eat. There are accompanying uh, images about that in which it, say, it shows us that they are kept in a sort of a baggage control area. Um, they're all allowed to sit there, but there is no free or pay water where they can buy water or get it free, uh, bearing in mind and, uh, of the people. It says here, only two people working at immigration at, this, at that time. Then, the forces are behaving as if these pass returning passengers are lepers. What a <clears throat> deal. COVID all over Sri Lanka and what a fuss with the returnees. Eventually, six hours to clear immigration and now no buses to go to the hotel. Huge crowds. The army guys are asking for passports for them to buy bottles from the duty free. Uh, the sea. It goes on, on the bus, but no driver for the bus now. An hour and a half later, uh, the passengers got a bus and is on the way. But in between, um, they're having to pay 6,000 rupees for a PCR test, 2,800 rupees for a um, coordination charge, and another 400 for transport. Grand total of 9,200. There are some passengers who are going straight into pay facilities. Others, what about the people who can't afford any of this? And why this sort of ill treatment or treatment without feeling? No, if uh, what he has uh, written or forwarded is correct, we are very sorry about it. We are sorry to hear that. Yeah. Actually, uh, there had been complaints about uh, the methodology that we have adopted. You know, so the difficulties some passengers face um, on and off at the airport. But those uh, the issues were attended to. Surely I'll bring this specific case to the notice of the Minister of Tourism and, of, and Aviation. Of, of air, I will, try, I will share with you uh, the fact that this passenger is, like you, a medical practitioner. Of course, yes, you know, it's a very sad scenario, uh, irrespective of the fact that whether he's a medical practitioner or, practitioner or not. Everybody who comes back to the country should be treated with uh, dignity. And also, uh, having, having mentioned that, I must also uh, state the fact that you know uh, they are understaffed actually so they utilize minimum number of uh, you know the employees at the airport mm. and also um, certain times the people of the armored forces those who you know those who are in this job they've been overworked at times so and also but this is a pretty serious matter that they couldn't buy a bottle of water for five yeah. hours that's a serious matter but the time duration taken it's little longer than what it used to be mm -hmm. it's because of the strict measures that they need to adhere to mm. but this uh, this scenario is something special we we'll surely bring it to the you notice of the you know relevant authorities and and um, because after all on a practical level uh, it won't cost much uh, That's true. to to have bottles uh, of water lined up on a, on a table or something where you can help yourself. That is true. Um, you know, a sort of a self-service kind of scenario. Yes. Um, but also, what about, Doctor, I, I mean, this passenger 
had no issues about paying for the PCR, although this passenger had uh, three or four, uh, three PCRs done prior to this morning um, on their travels. Now, what about people who are coming back from the Middle East? Are expatriate workers who are stuck now without a job, without a place to stay. Some people have been living in parks and so on. And when they come in and they need to get the PCR, what's the situation there? No, actually this is pertinent to this is, you know, the, those who asked to pay or the people, those who paid and came to Sri Lanka yeah. and they're going for the paid quarantine as well. Yeah. But there had been a, there had been an issue pertinent to the other people, those who did not pay the numbers were rising with that you know the the camps the the quarantine camps are also fully occupied mm. so we have seen you know lesser number of people being uh, you know taken back to the country because of this developing scenario but those who came free of charge they didn't have to pay for the PCR so it's it's for the paid category actually okay so others would, would not be charged they won't be charged yeah, but they right. still need the same process yeah, same process. Medically, yes. the treatment would be the same. In yeah, the sense, right. the, uh, yes. you know, they have to have procedure. Procedure is the same. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the the last two messages was that uh, the pe the fellows, I, I presume the driver, uh, did not use the highway but the normal the the old road, and then stopped someplace, disappeared, and uh, then came back, and um, clearly uh, a very very distressed and unhappy yeah, passengers this morning uh, and a person who was a frontline worker in this whole fight against uh, trying to control COVID. Um, so you say that you will look into this? Of matter? course, yes, we will surely immediately after the show, I will talk to the Minister of Tourism and Airport and Aviation yes. and also bring this specific scenario to his attention and also we can, you know, in fact, we can call the commander and also, you know, um, notice. Um, um, all right. So, the, the, can we just can we move on? So you, you have no trouble if uh, this person calls you and tells you of the story. Yes. No issue at all. Exactly as it is. Yes, no issue at uh, all. Just yes. in case can, I've can you know, you my number to him so that he can call. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, you don't say on the f on the f air because your phone will start ringing now. Yeah. Um, Nothing. I just want to go back to the um, to something also quite current, especially because Christmas is approaching. The Easter bombings, a very sad and black day in the history of Sri Lanka, no doubt. Yet, during this presidential commission of inquiry, uh, a member of the uh, Attorney General's team, uh, Azad Nawavi, um, who works there was under questioning revealed that the file came to them at the AG's department three weeks after the Easter bombings and there was in the file when it originally had appeared there had no reference to Zaran, um, arrest warrants and so on and so forth so they there wasn't anything they could do anyway but isn't it shocking that in spite and despite the intelligence of, that was available, that the AG's department, somebody didn't bother to send that information to them. Yeah, that's right. It's quite alarming. Some of the revelations uh, made at this uh, presidential committee. Yeah. So that's why. So uh, that's why his excellency, the president, has appointed this committee to look into the, you know, different paths that had taken the different aspects of what had happened actually. So the truth is being unveiled. So depending on that, uh, the, the legal action would be initiated against those who are responsible. Yes, mm -hmm. there had been few issues put into that, you can, as you could see. And um, uh, in one case, one of the uh, investigating officers uh, has been held responsible for not actually sending this uh, intelligence and the whole shebang yes. to the AG's department for yeah, right. this reaction. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so those are responsible, not not a single uh, person. It's, there are so many people those who are involved mm. in this racket, mm. primarily because of the fact that they have not taken this uh, information seriously, but it had uh, created a uh, you know, big black mark in the history of the country. Absolutely. So that's right, yes. And um, the, the other matter of uh, uh, grave contention, which we will come to uh, soon after we, uh, uh, we come back from the break, is the attack uh, 
or the incident at the Mahara prison. Um, the uh, reduction in the um, commuting of life sentences to 20 years and the impact on that uh, according to our current legal system. We are in conversation with Dr. Ramesh Patranam, uh, Minister, Cabinet Minister for Plantations and also the Cabinet Spokesperson. We'll see you on the other side of this break. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline. Uh, we're in conversation with the Cabinet co-spokesperson, uh, Dr. Ramesh Patrana, who's also Cabinet Minister of Plantations, and he's a medical practitioner as well. Now then, Dr. Mahara Prison. We had one of your junior colleagues, the Minister, the State Minister, say that none of these people died from being shot. Surely, it can't be, they didn't get instant bleed, sort of uh, spontaneous bleeding, did they? Yes. They uh, died? Yeah. Why? No, actually, that's why uh, Minister of Justice, uh, Honorable uh, Ali Sabri, appointed this commission on the following day. So yeah. they have, they have uh, submitted their first interim, first report yesterday. So they have, um, they've looked into these uh, different aspects, scenarios that are developed. Has the President so, not given you a look at it yet? No, we, we didn't get the chance as yet, but they are, we, should be, we should get it within a couple of days' time. Okay. So as per the committee reports, well, I didn't know the details, but there had been an internal brawl. So which is, uh, the prelude to that is that, you know, these, uh, most of these prisons were overcrowded. Whereas, you know, this 100 people should be in one cell, whereas they have about 300 people. Mm. So the capacity is, um, you know, it's uh, it, it had gone down, so they can't bear. Mm. So the internal rivalry had taken place initially, which had led to, you know, this uh, secondary scenario. Actually, their ulterior motive was to, you know, to escape from the prison. Yeah. Some people had not agreed for that, and they had an internal role. So obviously, some, some form of force must have been used. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as per the you know as the initial investigations there had been no shooting as such mm -hmm. so there had been roles so that was the that was the current scenario but we should be able to get more details it's a fully independent commission so we should be the country should know the truth about it so we think that there are no uh, ulterior motive from the side of the you know the the you know the prison guards or from the superintendent of the particular prison. You might yeah. agree with me that uh, with the Ides of March, also known as the United Nations uh, meeting coming up in uh, March, <coughs> that um, this is bound perhaps to come up and uh, cause some concern to the Western uh, democracy-loving uh, nations. Uh, because you, if you remember in 2012 we had a similar situation of course yes it's very unfortunate it. actually yeah so this had um, happened again but in 2012 it was completely different mm. but this time it's more or less in relation to this you know covid scenario that had developed inside the presence as well so this has an interrelationship with the fast spreading covid scenario in the country right so and apart from that uh, if there's anything else we should be able to unveil the truth once the commission, uh, you know, carry out the full investigation about it. Um, I'm going to read one, uh, two messages maybe. Um, here we go. A breath of fresh air. The first minister I know who apologized for the shortcomings, in this case the airport, always matter of fact, does not mince his words and never tries to spin us a story. Thank you, Minister Patirana. Kudos to you. Oh, all right. Kudos to you. Now then, uh, and they said to us as well, but kudos to you. Thank you for being so forthright because honestly, we can do with people being that. Here we, uh, here we come to a question more in line with your job. As Minister of Plantations, do you know how much uh, or what is the cost of production percentage goes as head office charges as poor worker, workers have to earn that? Uh, he, he must be referring to the regional plantation companies, yes. I suppose, right? Yeah. So actually, we've been looking very seriously into that matter. So actually, their contribution from the RPC sector has been, you know, coming down gradually. Yeah. Now, as at now, it's only 24% they contribute. So the tea, when it comes to tea, small holding sector contributes 76%. 
So we are very concerned about it, but uh, while producing 24%, they are utilizing more than 40% of land mass of the country yeah. in relation to tea plantations. So we are critically evaluating their scenarios and are you, going different to force companies. Them, are you going to force them into making investment in replanting and so on and so forth? Of course, yes, we have been talking and we have been, we have been thinking of the concessionary agreements. I think so we should rip it apart and, and tell them to go fly a kite if they can't get it right. Because if they continuously making losses, as they claim to, the, the, uh, the actual plantation companies, and my contention is that quite often these plantation companies pass off a, a big chunk of their revenue to, mother to companies. the other company. To mother's holding, yes. Yes, so then that company looks like it's uh, making a big loss and so you, on. Uh, you are 100% correct. So we've, um, we've seen such scenarios. So unprecedented transactions and also unforeseen circumstances where the, you know, the, the, the plantation companies transfer their funds to the holding company. Yeah. And also, so, and also as you correctly mentioned, that management fees that are involved heavy costs some, some of them are coming at. So we are looking to all those um, different scenarios. So yes, in no uncertain terms, we have requested them to put things back in track. Are you, are you ready yes. to make a tough decision and talk tough with of them? Of course, yes. Uh, His Excellency the President is very keen. He has uh, you know, he is, you know, voiced his concern, even in the parliament. So we are, yes, we are talking, we are talking to them. And also, we are talking to the other measures, um, other stakeholders in relation to this. Because if yes, they are continuously making losses, they, 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 they ought to be going home and leave it to others who can make a profit and better the conditions of the plantation workers and the output and so on and so yeah, forth. That's right, yes. Uh, since some of these companies are listed companies, the transactions wouldn't be that easy. Since the government is also having concerns about some of the issues. And I'm also, taking so back means yeah, taking sorry. back. You know, taking back in the sense that government, you also think twice whether the government can manage such, uh, you know, big lands. So we have to have another plan. So we are working on that with the help of the Attorney General's Department. We are thinking of how to renegotiate with them, and also we are looking into the agreements. But what we first, what we want to do is to talk to them, which we have been doing, mm. and asking them to, you know, put the, you know, put things in, you know, back in track, and also uh, also provide us with. Uh, new management plan, also new business plan, so that they could perform better. Uh, firstly, looking after uh, the company and also looking after the interest of the uh, workers who work in there. And I have several questions about, but I'm running out of, t uh, 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 out of time. But the crux of this is several people asking us, is the government considering a lockdown starting around the 20th of December bearing in mind that there'll be a lot of uh, movement, people movement and so on. Well, we have, we have not taken a decision as such. It's, it's uh, you know, that, that has to, that decision has to be taken by that committee. But um, something important I must mention here, whatever, whether we go for a lockdown scenario or not. So we have to adopt new social uh, norms under these circumstances. So the festive season, it's, not, it's going to be a bit of a difficult time for all of us again. Mm. So uh, I kindly ask the people of this country, you know, the government alone or the health authorities alone can't do this job. Mm -hmm. So it's up to uh, particular individuals and families to look after themselves. In that case, it's very you know, paramount important that keep the, you maintain the social distance, wear the mask and you know, wash your hands frequently. Such measures, measures need to be adopted. So with that, you know, the social gatherings would also uh, need to be minimized. Yeah. So lockdown or not, we have to adapt. So it's a difficult times actually, but uh, we ask the people of the country to be little patient. So it's everywhere, it's difficult time. You have seen world over people come to streets and difficult times we are passing, but we keep our fingers crossed that uh, something would happen partly. Herd immunity is being developed in certain parts of the world. And also this vaccine is introduced. So we think that uh, things would come back to normal, say, after three to six months' time. Very quick last question. Yes. Are Mrs. P. V. Jaisundra and Cabra and Mahindraj Paksa collecting money to pay for all these vaccines? Well, we should be, I mean, like, uh, you know, this has come, uh, the, whatever the money that we won't come yeah. as a taxes. Okay. So the people of the country would pay these taxes. Right. But if we need to spend money for the vaccine, if that's, that's the most important thing, yes, we are fully prepared to spend money for the vaccine. Good. Um, we hope that they do all that. 
Dr. Ramesh Patrana, we appreciate your time on uh, Newsline Live. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's Thank a pleasure, you. pleasure all the time. And that's the way it was on Newsline Live. And it's now time for the prime time news from News First. Uh, the best news to watch, actually, uh, because it gives it to you the way we see it and we explain it the way it should be. So on that note, take care. Have a great evening ahead of you. And as always, God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.